Welcome back to the Heal the Hurt podcast. In today's show, I'm going to talk about the fascinating polarity of the two codependent personality types. Now, codependence can be characterized as living in one of two extremes. The typical under-empowered codependent that we all mostly identify with and know, but what few people recognize or it gets lumped in, unfortunately, is the other spectrum, the over-empowered. That side has never really been separated out by most people. And that's the side I really want to dig in to today, to give you an understanding, because I think without this information, we're missing out on really developing healthy, loving, connected re relationships, careers, and parenting styles. Now, before I get into the specifics of the over-empowered uh, codependent, I want to share what I believe are the six common characteristics that they share. The first one is childhood trauma. As I talked about in my previous video, what causes codependence, anyone who's struggling with codependence, and I believe it's all of us, have been through less than nurturing parenting, which by its nature is abusive. Now, I know that term is very difficult for people to hear, but I don't think we as a society are in reality as to how this less than nurturing dysfunctional parenting affects us so deeply. And that's why I choose, along with Pia Melody, to call it abusive. As she pointed out, and I pointed out in that video, we tend to you know, only have this small segment of what abuse looks like. And what I think we're minimizing is the impact of all these subtle ways, not because parents are bad. This isn't, again, I'm never trying to blame parents. You can't be blamed for something you were never taught. We've never approached these subjects, so everyone's doing the best they can. Parents that have done these things, and I've done all of them. Like, I'm as guilty as anybody. I have been abusive to my children. And it's my belief, until we get into that reality, because as you're going to see, one of the common core symptoms of codependency is an inability to live in reality that at times we are all abusive. That's just being human. That doesn't make us bad. And so the way to recover from it is one, we have to admit that that happens. We also, by doing so, create the ability for true connection and intimacy to happen. Because if we're not in truth, we can't have connection. We can't have intimacy. And so at the core, what both the under-empowered and the over-empowered share is they suffered um, abusive less than nurturing parenting. Now, if you want to learn more about what those are, go check out my video that I did just the other day regarding this topic. I'll leave you the link for that so you can look at and begin to get into reality that these perfect imperfections of our parents, that they weren't intended to be unloving, uh, but they are abusive and they've left tremendous wounds in all of us. Nobody's immune. We're all struggling with this dynamic and that makes it inclusive because so many people don't want to admit stuff because then I'm separate. I'm bad. I'm defective. We're all the same in this area. We're all perfectly imperfect and hurting. And you see it becomes inclusionary and it's no longer segregated. And that's what gives us the freedom to go, okay, I'm not a bad person. We can join in this together and break through this barrier and create true connection with our parents and the people we want to build relationships with and our own parenting of our own children, okay? The second characteristics that they share in common is they both have damaged self-esteem. Now, on the underempowered, classically, they have little or no self-esteem, all right? And that's part of what they're doing is they're trying to take care of others to feel a sense of esteem. That's what they were taught in childhood. Now, on the other side, the overempowered, they have false esteem. They're looking for esteem outside of themselves in something that's called other esteem. I'll get into what other esteem looks like. But it's basically, remember, we're talking about the polarity here. One side underpowered, one side overempowered. And so they have a grandiose false arrogance about themselves. And that's codependent. The next characteristics that they share in common is an inability to take, take care of their needs and wants. Now, on the underempowered side, what they are, they can be too needy, too dependent. They're too demanding. 
So by demanding somebody else rescue them and take care of them, they have the, they don't have the ability to take care of themselves. Now on the polar opposite side, you have the overempowered and they are anti-dependent. They are needless and wantless. These are the people that never open up. They never ask for help. They stay shut down and walled off. That's still codependence. What the next symptom that they both share in common is dysfunctional boundaries. Again, they do it in polar opposite ways. The underempowered is boundaryless. They're too vulnerable. They're too dependent. They're chaotic and impulsive. While the overempowered, they live behind walls. They are controlling. They are quiet. They are distant. It's again, it's the polar opposite of needing so much and not needing anything. And so they're completely, both sides are in complete dysfunction and not in healthy, mature, moderation, adult moderation. The next core symptom that they share in common is an inability to express and own their reality. And this is what they both will struggle with. They will see them on the underempowered side, they will see themselves as unselfish and kind in all the ways they try and help people. They're like, oh, I just want to be kind and, and take care of people and, and be supportive when the fact is it's manipulative. Um, it's like I, I had a client even just this morning. She's struggling with this and she's breaking up with a boyfriend who's very destructive. And she was like, I can't do this over the phone. Um, you know, I can't do it in text. It, 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 you know, I, I'm a kind person. I have to do this in person. Well, then she went on to tell me how the ex wouldn't leave the apartment, spent the whole day with him. She allowed by her, she was out of reality that her niceness actually set up an abusive dynamic and a manipulative dynamic where he hung out all day, which gave her false attention, even though she didn't want it. Remember, she's needless and wantless, can't set boundaries. And so, but she's not in reality that her niceness is actually manipulative and abusive because now it also allows his dysfunction to operate. So she's enabling it. And so they're out of, on the underempowered, they're out of reality that their so-called niceness and kindness actually isn't. They can't see themselves and they can't see it that way. And they're firmly convinced that this is kind and loving how they care about other people. You'll hear a lot of people, I'm an empath. What an empath really is, is a hyper codependent who has no boundaries Everything gets in, affects their internal boundaries. They're affected by anyone and everything. That is a severe codependent. A true empath can empathize with a person, but they're not affected. That would be healthy empathy. But the, the, we've created this new term for codependent. Really, it's hiding codependence of empath. Well, a, the, what you're really describing is a severe codependent who has no internal boundaries and is completely affected by everyone and everything. And it's, see, this is the false empowerment that they use. Well, it's because I'm so kind and I'm so nice. Now, I'm not saying they're not kind and not nice, but they're not in reality that this kindness and niceness is actually codependent, severe codependence and a lack, an inability to care for themselves and properly care for somebody else. They are too affected and they're not in reality that this is dysfunctional. Now on the overempowered, they don't see themselves clearly, but they think they do. They think they're always right, always empowered, that they don't need help, that they don't do anything wrong, that there's nothing wrong with them. Their childhood was perfectly fine. None of it, like they'll say, no, my childhood was great is they literally tell a story of an alcoholic mother and all these different things like, yeah, no, it doesn't affect me. So they're completely out of reality of, and that they're shut down or defensive uh, and how they um, um, are invulnerable and anti-dependent. They'll see those as signs of strength. And if you, you know, want to share feelings, you're weak. They're completely detached from a re reality. Both are stuck unaware of how hurtful and abusive their childhoods were and how hurtful and abusive their own treatment of themselves and others is abusive. They are out of reality and out of touch, yet both think they are and they think they know who they are. 
Those are common characteristics of both sides. Finally, <laughs> the last characteristics that they share in common is an inability to express that reality moderately. They both live in extremes and in chaos, all right? Um, on the underempowered side, they get over-involved. That's an inability to navigate the reality. They will um, take care of everybody else, tell them what to do. Um, they, they will sacrifice any of their needs to take care of somebody else first. Um, they will distort their view of helping others. And so they're not in, they can't express their thoughts and feelings moderately. That's the other aspect. They will, you know, puke all over you. They'll be hyper emotional about things. They can't moderate themselves when they express themselves. And so they, they, they can't operate within this place. Now we all have moments where we spike emotionally, but they live in this place. Now on the polar opposite extreme, the overempowered, they're completely detached, uninvolved, emotionless, nothing gets to them. They can break up in six, 10 year marriage relationship and uh, I'm over it. That's an inability to be in touch and connect with and express their reality. They can't share that they were hurt because they're so detached from the hurt. They were so detached in the relationship. Now, this is what's fascinating is, and this is why I believe, you know, Pia Melody is the, at least to me, it's, she's the only person who's broken it out into these two different subtypes. Pretty much in my experience, there might be others that I'm just not aware of. I mean, there's tons of great people out there that, you know, I haven't seen everybody's stuff. But whenever I go look, I just see this long laundry list. And many of these overempowered things are part of that list. But I find by doing that, it, it really confuses things. Because you know how we talk about opposites attracts and we wonder why this cold person, you know, and we'd say they're not co codependent. And that's what's fascinating. That's the brilliant work of Pia. Like she points out the typical arrogant, grandiose, invulnerable, anti-dependent, perfectionist, overachiever, the typical CEO, athlete, all these people that have achieved high success, we as a society have branded that as a healthy adult. That is a severe codependent, massively codependent. And that's why I think it's so valuable because people that are codependent feel themselves as less than the typical model. And so when you jump it all together, the view of a codependent is always just this weak, spineless, person who's a people pleaser and gives themselves away. And that's not true. While that is the underempowered side, the overempowered side is the side we celebrate in society and go, aren't they great? Look how strong and powerful and confident they are. When in fact, they are none of that. It is a wall, a barrier to intimacy. They are hurting just as much as this. And you see, this is why it's all abusive parenting and it's all less than nurturing parenting because both sides are in dysfunction. This side can't attach because they try to overly attach. This side can't attach because they're so avoidant of attachment. And so you wonder why the divorce rate is over 50%. You wonder why you get in these relationships and none of it makes sense. And that's why I think it's so valuable. That's why I'm such a proponent of Pia Melody stuff is I think her stuff is brilliant and really develops the cause and the understanding of codependence, which can really help you, especially that underempowered. You're sitting there feeling less than because you're not this grandiose, arrogant, anti-dependent, needless and wantless, overachiever, perfectionist that the world says is great. You're always comparing yourself to that. And this opens up the door to, oh my God, we're the same. We're actually the same. We just live our perfect imperfections in polar opposite ways. Oh, thank God I'm not bad. Now, the, the benefit for this side is for them to get into reality because from this side, there's no love, there's no connection. You wonder why the athlete, the politician, the actor, actress, the successful person who conquers 
and becomes the CEO and everything and then has all these drug issues and their life collapses, divorces, serious dysfunction, you know, in, in all of these overachievers. Well, do you see there's no remedy for them because nobody points it out that the reason they're struggling is they have severe codependence issues and that's heartbreaking. We're leaving out a whole half of the society that's stuck in this pain by lumping it all in one instead of going, no, we're, we're all the same. We just express it in polar opposite view or polar opposite ways at the extremes. And many people bounce more in here. They will move from the over empowered and under empowered. That's me. I do both. Look at my videos. My God, sometimes like when I put down other authors and speakers or, or writers or people on these topics, well, I just did it in my, in my, you know, um, celebrating Pia, I inadvertently put down other people. Well, that's grandiosity. I'm right. I have the best information than anybody else. Well, that's massive codependence. I'm trying to overvalue myself because I think so little of myself. You know, I struggle with all this stuff too. And then on the other side, you'll see sometimes I sign off a show and I'm like, well, if you want to, if you'd like to share, very mousy, very, well, I don't know if I have enough worth for you to like what I do. Like, I'm caught in all this stuff too. We're, none of us are immune. We're all battling it. And, and I bounce. Sometimes I know this as a child and young adult, even middle-aged adult, I was primarily in this under-empowered, less than position. As I gain self-esteem, and this is part of recovery, I have swung to this grandiose, arrogant, I've got the best information of anybody. I know more than anybody. You have to listen to my stuff. And if you don't, if you're not doing this, like I say this all the time, sometimes not in videos, but I'll say it to people I know, man, if you don't get to this deeper stuff, you're not dealing with the real stuff. Their stuff is so superficial. Like that is massive shame, low self-esteem. And I see it and I go, yeah, but I don't want to let it go because I felt so under empowered. And that's part of the recovery journey is we'll start out as one or the other polarity. And as we start to recover, we'll swing way over to the other side. Well, I've been kind of stuck in this over empowered, grandiose, I'm better than anybody side. You know, it's something I'm really working on of trying to, okay, get back to moderation. I've had periods in my life where I'm in that healthy, mature moderation. But right now I'm kind of swung out over here and that's okay. I'm perfectly imperfect. Man, I've been through hell in my life. How could I not swing from side to side? It's always, that's why I always say it's, enjoy, it's a journey, enjoy it. Why would we want this stuff to end? Look at how much joy it brings to our life, figuring things out, getting better at it. Our pain and our dysfunction is our freedom and it's our joy when we make peace with it and we're willing to own it and face it. So. This is the side that gets left off. And I, I'm i going to continue to try and work on how I communicate that in less of a grandiose, I'm better than anybody. I know more than anybody. My way is the best way. Their way is, isn't. I'm going to continue to work on it. But as you watch my videos and see stuff, you'll see it's there. Both sides. I'm bouncing between. And I'm always trying to work on finding that healthy, mature middle, because I went through, just like all of us, severely abusive and less than nurturing parenting. That doesn't mean I didn't also go through incredibly nurturing, loving, wonderful moments as a child. My parents, I adore them. They're perfect imperfections, both the good and the bad. That's healthy, that's moderate, that's reality. Like, for instance, Christmas, I, the way my parents did Christmas. I mean, I, I, I want to throw this in because I talk so negatively all the time. It seems like all I'm ever doing is blaming and bashing. But as kids, listen to this. We would go to bed with nothing, no decorations, no presents, no tree, nothing. We'd all go to bed and my parents and grandparents, aunts, uncles would stay up all night. They'd bring in the tree, lights everywhere, stockings. And with four kids, it was presents everywhere. We'd walk out into this Norman Rockwell 
magic. Colors, lights, beautiful paper, train sets running through the presents, bikes. It was pure magic. Literally, my younger brother and I would wake up about 15 minutes after they finally finished and went to bed. And my parents, with a smile on their face, no anger, nothing, would wake up excited and we'd open presents as the sun's coming up. And man, it was the one day of the year my dad would come out unshaven in his pajamas. He wasn't this detached, over-empowered, codependent. He got to moderation. He'd sit on the floor and play with us. It was the one time of year I got to spend with my father, nurturing, loving, completely attuned, paying attention to me. See, our parents do that all the time. All I'm asking when I talk about this stuff is let's get into reality. We have those special moments, but we also have the imperfect moments. And we don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater in either direction. We have to get to moderation. We don't have to. See, there's my grandiosity saying you have to do something and my arrogance. What I'm open to and advocating for is people consider, see, that's much more boundaried and healthy, that we consider that both sides can coexist and both are equally okay. Our, our parents' imperfections and their wonderful perfections. We can have them at the same time and, and we don't have to give up our love for them. Okay? So, <laughs> let me get into that falsely empowered specifically because I, I think the separation will really help you. Especially the underempowered. You won't feel so bad about your perfect imperfections because you'll see, because we, again, as Pia points out, we celebrate the arrogant, grandiose, invulnerable, anti-dependent, perfectionist, walled off, controlling person in society. We see them, that's the sign of a well-adjusted adult, when in fact it's severe dysfunction and it is the exact same codependent dynamic operating in the polar opposite way of the typical codependent that we think about. And here are, there's so much here. And look, I have memory problems. You always see me looking down because of my trauma, my memory goes. So I have to work off of these things. So one of my many perfect imperfections. So I'll just share it with you. Um, it, it get me out of my grandiosity and just be vulnerable of, look, this is what I have to do to be able to communicate this stuff. So um, let's get back to it. Enough about me. Uh, we seek other esteem through our career and social status. This is the primary way, like you look, especially here in America, it's all about achieve, 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 achieve. Well, the most successful are the most broken. What's driving them is an incredible shame core of feeling less than, and yet it's being expressed as better than. And that's the grandiosity, that's the achievement side. They're looking for that, all of that. When people do that, they're looking for what's called other or outside esteem. Their value is derived by whether they have the career whether they have the social status, the likes and friends on Facebook and, and Instagram and all of that. All of that is severe codependence being expressed in the over-empowered aspect. They're looking for validation outside of themselves. Just like the under-empowered is trying to seek it by taking care of you. They value themselves because they're so nice and, and so caring like the empath does that. That's dysfunction and lack of self-esteem. But the other side of it, of achieving so much, is feeling the exact same thing, but they're doing it in the polar opposite way, all right? Another char characteristic is they will rarely know what they're feeling. You know this experience, you go, what's going on, what do you feel? Uh, nothing, I'm fine. They're completely blank, detached. They literally don't feel, and they can't communicate their feelings. Um, they will also minimize or deny their feelings and see feelings as weakness. Well, think about this overempowered. They, you know those types. They just, wow, what are you doing crying? Wow. Or, you know, the typical, and this is what's sad. We're teaching women to do this. The typical male CEO in the boardroom, oh, I don't bring feelings into it. Well, that's just a lack of understanding of how the brain and body works. Every thought we get starts with a perception, with a feeling. So we're always feeling, our thoughts and actions are always derived from our feelings. And we're turning women into this. 
we're, we're asking women to shut down who they are, their inherent gift. So both sides, this over-empowered side on the female side is really exploding. It, it didn't used to be this way. You know, when Pia wrote the book, you know, it was always classified as women were this under-empowered and men were the over-empowered, that's completely changed. I'm actually seeing a reverse. In the younger generation especially, the millennials and that, the women are over-empowered, the men are the under-empowered. It's completely shifted. In our attempt to bring equality, the feminist movement has created this false dynamic that's hurting both sides. Um, on the, for the falsely empowered, they also use isolation or anger or humor to hide their feelings. It's a great wall to pull back. Uh, they lack empathy and interest in other people's feelings. You've, if you're that underempowered and you're married to that overempowered, that's usually the connection. That's usually what draws them together. And that's all based on childhood trauma. See, the overempowered was suffocated emotionally as a child. That's why they're so detached. And that's why they're seeking outside esteem. They can't be vulnerable because the, the emotional life was sucked out of them as a child. And so that's why they're so detached from their feelings. To actually attach would feel like the death of them because that's what happened in their childhood. They lost their emotional soul. It was stripped from them in childhood by their parent, one or both parents. And that's why they've created this arrogant, grandiose distancing stance, okay? Uh, they won't ask or accept help. You know those type, they get sick and like, no, leave me alone. Or they won't even mention that something bad happened in their life. They're complete because to mention it would create connection. Well, that's the reliving of the suffocation and damage in childhood. They hide and mask, completely mask or, or even detached from their emotional pain. They're not even aware of it. They'll deny it. They won't even admit to it. Um, and most times they're not even aware of it. That would some, that was part of one of my struggles. Um, physical pain. I remember I used to have a construction company and I'd come in and I'd have blood all over me. And my ex-wife would go, what just happened? And my immediate reaction was to get angry. What? What? Like I thought I was being attacked. That was my wall. That was that side of my over-empowerment. And I had, I was always cutting myself, dropping things on me. Like literally I'd have huge gashes in my legs because I'd cut thing, you know, lay the board across my leg, cut it. The saw wouldn't get it, but you know, the, the something splinters and things, I'd be bleeding. I'd have stuff like blood coming down my hands. I wouldn't feel it. Wouldn't even notice it. Was completely detached from physical pain. That's how far out on this side of the spectrum I was physically. See. That's the other thing is this can be broken down into physical, emotional, intellectual. So we can be um, emotionally on the underempowered, but physically on the overempowered. See with her emotionally, I was underempowered, but physically I, I've always been overempowered. I very, I have a massive pain tolerance. Well, that's an inability to attach to my physical pain. That goes back to a family member who would beat the heck out of me. I learned to sustain and detach from that feeling to survive what I went through, okay? <clears throat> On this side, uh, the overempowered, they label, judge, and criticize others persistently. Well, watch my videos, I do a lot of that. You know, uh, I'm always taking that grandiose position. Um, and, you know, even though I, I look back at videos, and I'm like, I can see that I'm trying to be moderate but I'm still picking words and phrases that are very overempowered and arrogant and critical and judgy. I'm still stuck in that, okay? Um, and, and so that means I feel superior to others, which actually means the opposite. I feel so inferior, like, and see what all of that comes from is my father. I just couldn't get my dad to hear and accept my reality. I could show him, like I was a pro golfer and, and my dad and I would go play golf and we'd sit and watch golf swings and he'd mention something and then I'd go, you know, a pro's golf swing and he goes, oh, this happened. I said, well, actually, no, dad, this is what happened. He wouldn't even listen to me. No, my dad was an average golfer. My dad didn't know anything about the golf swing. Well, not anything. His, see, there's a grandiose statement, all or nothing, black and white. See, it's all over the place in my life. Like, this is a great video for you to see how dysfunctional I am. Um, but 
his level of knowledge of the golf swing was about this. Well, I'd made it a career, yet he couldn't hear my reality. And so the reason I get so grandiose and feel superior is you, the audience, or these other people that talk about it, I have put my father's face on it. I wanna prove that I know about this. That's because I feel so insecure and small that I need outside approval, validation, that see, I know something, dad. So when I'm doing all of that, what's happening is I'm a child. I'm literally four, six, eight years old, acting out of that, what's called the adapted wounded child. That's what all of us, when we're adults and we're doing all these codependent behaviors, we are 30, 40, 60 year old, adapted wounded child. We are actually six years old. So when you see me being perfectly imperfect and I'm swinging from one side of the other in my codependence, what you're seeing is different ages where I was either abandoned or ridiculed in the underempowered, or I learned to wall off and, and get grandiose to try and be seen and heard, okay? <laughs> Another aspect is they will be indifferent or authoritative or use rage to control. That was my father. If As soon as I would start to point out an imperfection or a different way to look at anything, boom, the rage would pop. Um, this is a, a very common on this side. They will rarely admit their mistake and they need to be right all the time. That was my father, all right? Um, and you know, like those CEOs and all that, part of their gift is that they're so headstrong, but it always has a detrimental effect. This is key. They try and control and shape others' thoughts, feelings, and actions. You've been through that. If you're the underempowered, you know being in a relationship, this is the narcissistic aspect of where they just have to be right. And, and so a lot of narcissism has this overempowered, codependent aspect to it. They will use, this is the, the seduction that they use. They use sex, money, intellect, charm, being very charming, that I do that, gifts, and to manipulate, control, and have power over a person. Well, think about it. There, I've used this, my intellect, about these topics. Um, I would, all, I used to always make, you know, be very sexual in my pursuits. Um, I would um, really use charm and flirt, things like that. That was the overempowered side because I felt so inadequate underneath. And I still struggle. I struggle with all this stuff, so it never ends, all right? They also avoid emotional, physical, intellectual, and sexual intimacy to keep control and distance. You know how, you know, they're too busy working. They're too busy taking care of the kids. They're too busy with their hobbies. And, but we celebrate as though they're independent. They're strong and powerful. You know, we're teaching women this, and that's what men did for decades, you know, for centuries. And now we're teaching that you know, having that power and control is actually self-empowerment. It's not, it's avoidance. Um, that's something I, what I realized is, it took me years of studying before I ever made the connection that I would start the relationship as the overempowered. And as soon as she made the commitment, I would drop to the underempowered and want her to take care of me. It's always been my dynamic and something, you know, I'm constantly trying to have to work on, okay? Um, they use illness or addiction to avoid real intimacy and connection. Uh, this is key. Uh, I see this all the time. It, people will go, what? I didn't get sick on purpose. Yes, we did. The science is overwhelming. There's only three diseases that if you're born with it, you get it. Every other illness and disease is brought on by the environment, which is really our emotional condition. And so like I, I, I had a client recently cancel. Well, what that client is going through is something emotional and they're trying to avoid it. They keep putting off the appointment. They're not ready to deal with it. And so they keep making themselves sick. Now people don't think they make themselves sick. That's because we have a lack of understanding. The, I've talked about this before. Western medicine is only giving us 50% of what we really should know. They completely ignore, and we've shown this through study after study, decades of research, proof that you cannot separate the body and the emotions from illness and disease. Like it is proof. It's not a question, but they refuse to even address it because they're all overempowered, codependent. It would, they'd have to admit they're wrong. 
That's why they choose to be a doctor is they're seeking false empowerment. That's why they're after it, okay? And so to admit, wait a minute, there's new information that's been proven scientifically. Oh my God, I'd have to face my false empowerment. That would require intimacy, vulnerability, admitting I'm wrong, all of these things. That's why we're not getting the best medical attention. That's why all these diseases are spiking. All these things are happening because the emotional condition of people is getting worse and worse and we still refuse to give people the information about how this goes. I hope I said that kindly and not grandiose. It felt that way, but who knows? I'll figure it out eventually. The other aspect of this is they will deny their childhood trauma and they'll see their childhood as perfect. And this is key. On the overempowered side, they'll be resistant to or will rarely seek help. That's that grandiose position of they have to be right. And so they won't allow new information in. If somebody was on this side, they've already turned this video off. They would have never stayed through all this because it was too confrontive. They see themselves, oop, no, I ain't going there. Don't let me hear any of that. You know, if they're way out on that extreme, they would never listen to my stuff. They would hate me. They will discount me. They will throw it all out just like my father, you know. Remember, healthy adults can take information from all sides and navigate their reality and their emotional reaction to it. Those who pop to an extreme, that's dysfunction. That's codependence, either the underempowered and an overempowered. The biggest stumbling block for both of these dynamics is their denial. Both are not in reality of the damage of their childhood and therefore they can't see or admit um, who they really are but both think they know who they are. They're really convinced of it. I'm struggling, I struggle with that. I think, oh, I've got, I know so much of this, I got it all figured out. And I have to keep reminding me, you know, reminding myself, Kenny, you can't see yourself. You're too close to it. That's why I'm always working with somebody and getting a reality check, trying to keep myself from the extremes, keep moving to the middle, keep getting real awareness and real acceptance of how imperfect I am because the extremes are a lack of love for ourselves. They're a lack of compassion. They're both, you know, a lack of self-esteem. And so when we get to the extremes, we're abandoning ourselves. And so that's why I'm so open and transparent about my imperfections. I have to be. I've talked about this before. Shame, you put, you put these imperfections in the dark and they explode. We have to bring them out into reality. We have to own and accept them and be comfortable with them. And so that's why I do it is, um, and also because of Pia, Pia talks about that, you know, any coach or therapist, if you aren't able to openly communicate about your pain and your current and past struggles, your client's ability to recover will be severely limited severely. That top-down approach is this grandiose, I'm above you, I'm perfect, I don't share any of my stuff. The no intimacy can happen from that. And coaching and therapy and counseling requires intimacy and connection. Now there's a boundary, there's a healthy boundary, but our clients, whichever way you go about this as a therapist or as a coach, they need that connection, they need that transparency. And so that's why I share, you know, some people on my videos have called that unprofessional. Um, and it may be to them, that's their reality. Um, but I just, I have a different reality and a different life experience and have seen those coaches and therapists that can do that effectively and correctly. Their clients just take off. That's what it requires from all of us. So there you go. I hope that helps you really separate out the two polarities and sides of codependence. You can see that we're all struggling with this. We all are perfectly imperfect and need help. If you think this will help somebody in your life, especially on that overempowered side, if they'll listen to it, they probably won't. But um, if you think it'll help somebody, please share. Please leave your comments as to if this helped you. And if you like the content, please subscribe. And as I always say, just enjoy the journey.